By now, I know everyone has seen Dodge's EV day, so I'm not gonna go and waste your time and go over every single little thing about it, but what I will do is go over some things that you might have missed, because if you didn't watch the whole three hours of the live stream, you didn't see the full look of the new Charger, the new Dodge SUVs, and the horsepower numbers that these EVs can have. So we're getting into that, what I believe to be the new Cuda in this video. So let's get to the stuff. Now we open up on the courtyard in front of the Dodge Brothers house and the first thing I want to call to attention is the Viper. Look at where it is in the lineup. On the right you see all these previous Dodge vehicles and then to the left you see all the current Hellcat models, right? The Hellcat Challenger, Hellcat Charger, Hellcat Durango, this future car and for some reason the Viper. Now the Viper isn't a Hellcat, it isn't current, so why would we be facing towards the left with the rest of the current vehicles and not pointing towards the right with the rest of the previous model? Now if it was a first gen Viper, which they do have in their possession, I wouldn't have thought twice about it, but it just keeps showing up like a low key Easter egg. So I'm still holding out hope that a Viper will be coming sometime soon in the near future. But let's get into this car right here now. Under the sheets is 100% the new Charger, and it looks to be an evolution, not a revolution of the current model. Let me show you a side by side of the current Charger, and you tell me if the lower bumper doesn't look exactly like a Charger. Later in the live stream, Dodge showed exactly how it will look with this view of the side profile and this of the rear profile. So we can see how they're going to go with a slim headlight design for the front. Now this vehicle right here is a Hornet that should be coming next year that will be based on the Charger front end. So if Dodge plays games and don't let us see the car before 2024, we will get a taste of what it'll look like when the Hornet gets unveiled in the next few months. The Durango looks to have a similar style front end as the Hornet. So when the Hornet comes, we'll see exactly how Dodge's design language is gonna be in 2024 going forward. And if you're wondering how I know these vehicles are Dodges, if you look closely at the center cap on the wheels, you'll see the signature slanted stripes of Dodge. Now every vehicle they show later in the live stream all had different rims, and that makes it easier to distinguish which vehicle goes to which brand. So we have the Charger, the Hornet, the Durango. You can obviously tell this one right here is gonna be a Chrysler product with the wing design, but back to the Charger. Another detail we can tell is the rear end, similar to the current Challenger. And you'll see the same raised section from this car also makes the way to the Charger, which is a perfect spot for the redesigned front side emblem to reside. So this to me is proof that Dodge will retire the Hellcat logo and use this emblem to signify the high horsepower variance. Now let's jump to the electric elephant in the room. To me, it is not a Charger and not a Challenger. To me, this is the Dodge Cuda EV. We know it's not a Charger because if you look at the image, wait a second, let me brighten it up real quick. Looking at them side by side, the hood doesn't line up. There's no hump in the header panel and you can see the side profile of the Charger curves up towards the headlights and then in this shot right here, the Cuda doesn't. Now why do I say it's not a Challenger? If you look at the smoke near where the headlight would be, it looks like it is split between one headlight rather than two like on the Challenger. Current Challenger Challenger has two smaller headlights. The 70 Challenger, two smaller headlights. The Cuda, on the other hand, a single big headlight. Now there was one year in 1971 where the Cuda did switch over to four headlights similar to the Challenger. If they were gonna do a Cuda, they can either do it with one single headlight or they can do it with two headlights, depending on which model year they're gonna try to mimic. Now, just like I said earlier, with this rear emblem having a raised section, if you apply that to the front, you can tell based on that reflection that there is a raised section that is stuck back in the grill surround. This particular design does not work on a current generation Challenger. But if you look at the 70 Cuda, it will fit perfectly on that raised section in the middle of the grill. Now remember, from 1970 to 1974, the Cuda shared the same platforms as the Dodge Challenger. So Dodge has the ability to go a couple different ways with the Cuda. They can either make it replace the Challenger altogether, make the, the Cuda the full electric version that we see here, or they can just replace the Hellcat platform with Cuda. So we can have a Dodge Challenger SRT Cuda, and we can also have a Dodge Charger SRT Cuda. If you guys know about graphics cars, then the more Cuda core than the better performance. So Ford is using the Lightning for the F-150 electric truck. Chevy is looking to bring out the E-Ray for the C8. Ford might come out with a new EV car called the Thunderbird and Dodge has a computer renamed waiting in the wings. Remember, Cuda was just trademarked a few months ago. It hasn't been a full year yet. So if you look at the trademark, you see no mention of it being used on a concept vehicle like the Magneto. It can be used just like another trademark that they filed on the exact same day, the Grand Wagoneer. Dodge is also still holding out on the Tomahawk, but I don't think they'll use that for this particular vehicle. I think if anything, they'll use it for a Viper replacement. Remember when there were rumors of a Challenger Angel coming? Well, it's not gonna happen now because they let the trademark go. 
I'll give you a couple more reasons why the Cuda could be making a comeback. For one thing, Dodge refused to name the all electric car coming in 2024. It could have easily said Challenger. The Barracuda and the Cuda was two different cars. From like 69 to 74, the Cuda was its own separate model complete with its own VIN number. It was basically like a high performance variant of the Barracuda. If they want to make a high performance version of the EVs or the Challenger and Chargers, they can just call them Cudas, just like they did in the previous history. We know this car is not a Hellcat because if it was, where is the electrified Hellcat emblem. The Dodge CEO promised to never make another Challenger as fast as a Demon. He kept that promise by neutering the Superstock one horsepower less than the Demon and not allowing any of the owners to get the Demon race ECU. So if Dodge kills the Challenger and goes Cuda, the promise is still kept. And if you guys remember this goofy slide about the Dodge CEO talking about the Hammerhead Shark, there's two things about it that I don't think people really understood about it. The Hammerhead Shark, they eat Stingray. So that right there is a clear shot at a C8 Corvette Stingray. And secondly, a hammerhead shark has that long head with two big eyes, which could be, for the Cuda, two big headlights rather than four. Now, other things I can notice with this new Cuda, they have a lit up emblem just like Mercedes-Benz does. The inner grill surround will light up just like other new companies are doing with their EVs, just like Rivian, just like Hummer, just like the Lightning. Now, the emblem on the rear is red, just like the taillights would be, so maybe this right here could be a sign that this emblem is going to work as a third brake light, just like how they did with the Viper. We see a big bulge in the middle of the hood, which has no point if they're gonna have motors mounted down low just like they did in this shot right here. Now this bulge right here could be for what they're gonna use for their hybrid version of the car. So maybe this is where we're gonna see the GMT6 engine. It's gonna be like an inline six cylinder, had that bulge right there in the front because the engine is longer than a V6 or a V8 configuration, but it's more narrow. So that might be why we're seeing such a defined bulge in the middle of the hood. The mirrors appear to be more squared off compared to the current version of the Challenger. The rear will be similar to the Charger. We can see this line right here also appears on the charger slide. Also, we never see the rear seat pillar in any part of the video. You see nothing up there, no no curves, no anything, no outline of the rear glass, not a single thing, even from the side shot, they cut it off right to the point where you could be seeing where that rear seat pillar is gonna be at. Now this hammerhead slide shows this silhouette right here, and you can see that glass is way back there near where the trunk lid would be at. So there's no reason why we should not see this particular section. This to me shows that we could potentially be getting a convertible version of the Cuda. If you look at the side footage, there is something sliding besides the car. If you make it to the last frame before Dodge cuts from it, it looks like either the door is closing in like a suicide door, or maybe that's just the convertible top closing down. So we could be seeing like a hard top convertible version, just like the C8 Corvette. Now I find it interesting that they pop up the concept vehicle at the very bottom only during this shot right here, where there's something sliding beside the car, which could signify some kind of different change to the door or to the top. And then this shot right here, where the camera is panning past to the side of the car. This shows that there's not gonna be a wide body version of this car. Maybe this is something they're still working on, but they don't have it finalized yet. You can also hear the electric motors whining as well. Now this will happen because the Dodge CEO said in a later interview that Dodge intentionally makes its supercharger loud because customers like the sound. And for electric vehicles, he specifically called out Formula E vehicles having a distinct sound. Dodge does this, to me it's gonna make it sound like these EVs are crying that they don't have a supercharged V8 engine that for some reason the company doesn't wanna update. RIP Hellcats, we will miss you. Also, we can hear the motor gain intensity, so we will see a launch mode, just like Tesla has ludicrous mode and Jinx and Hummer have a Watts to Freedom mode. We also see an all-wheel drive burnout, like that'll ever happen in real life. I mean, have they never driven the track hall in a T-Rex before and tried to do that? But with enough horsepower and no wide body, you could probably leave four tire marks. So let's go ahead and dive into how much power these EVs could have. So land to show later in the live stream, this slide right here with the Challenger placing on a set of large platform for American all-wheel drive performance. And we know from the slide that they plan on having between 150 and 330 kilowatt motors available for this platform. So that translates roughly to 200 to 442 horsepower per electric motor. Now this slide right here shows that they have a target zero to 60 or two seconds for their top model. So let's go ahead and do some numbers real quick. If Dodge copies other companies like Tesla and GM offering a rear wheel drive, a two and a tri-motor EV, we could see a base dual motor EV of 400 horsepower, which has more horsepower than the V6 car. 
possibly a rear wheel drive RT with 442 horsepower, which would be more horsepower than the current RT version has. An EV scat pack could go tri-motor with 600 horsepower, but that'd be more horsepower than the 392 version. The EV Cuda dual motor can go 882 horsepower, which is more horsepower than the Demon with his race ECU. And lastly, the EV Cuda tri-motor can go up to 1,326 horsepower, more horsepower than the Model S Plaid, the CA Zora, the Project One, and just short of the Kona ZX and then Remock. Now, there's nothing to say the Dodge won't go crazy in the future, like Remock can go with like a quad motor setup and go up to like 1,768 horsepower with the motors that they're gonna have available. But I'll leave that rumor for another day. Now, I haven't seen anyone discuss the possibility of a 1,300 horsepower EV from Dodge. Everyone keeps stopping at 800 horsepower ish. But Slanders is working on tri motor vehicles, just as Maserati. If you look at this slide, Slanders is going to save money by sharing as many parts as possible. So if the MC20 gets a tri motor, the Kudu will definitely get one as well. Now, these are max horsepower numbers because they can always tune the vehicle down with software to make a 700, 800, or 900, or 1000 horsepower version of the car, just like Tesla can magically over the air increase your car's performance and pay a couple grand to the Tesla app. So maybe in the future you can only afford the 807 horsepower version, pay a couple of grand like you would if you go into the Turner shop and Dodge will give you more power and maybe some more range. Now, Ralph Jilla said in another interview that the company was hiring a lot of software engineers and that from this slide, Dodge will be targeting millennials. What's more millennial than playing or having a car that have microtransactions to give you more power? Now, I know this is a pure speculation, but Dodge is already going the ridiculous route by trying to fool everyone that a pure electric car could be a muscle car. To me, muscle cars are heavy, high horsepower, loud, and affordable. Right now, the super stock is 82K and the Model S Plaid is 130 if you think about it, the Challenger and the Charger are on a decade old platform. And you telling me those cars are 80 some thousand dollars and we're not gonna expect a freaking EV version on a brand new platform not to be at least be in the 90K range? There's no way in the world they're gonna make these cars more affordable than a super stock that's on an aging platform. And even Solanda said in their own presentation that vehicles, especially EVs, won't be affordable until 2026, but they're gonna start rolling out in 2024. So we're gonna have a premium for the first couple years until they can bring the cost for their better tech down, the top model would easily hover in 90K range. I mean, just to give you a comparison, the Model S like long range version is 85K. There is no way they're gonna make this car, the top dog of the model, be cheaper than a dual motor Tesla Model S long range at 85K. If you look over the Model S Plaid numbers, Dodge has to beat every single one of these cars numbers. It has to beat the range. It has to beat the zero to 60. This car right here beat the demon. If Dodge wanna have any credibility on building EVs, they have to beat the top dog right now, which is the Tesla Model S Plaid. And Dodge better beat that 130k action price because if they don't, oh, I smell a flop cooking here. As far as hybrid drivetrain, nothing was discussed, but it did list only the 4 by e system, so no more e-torque. So hopefully some information will pop up in the near future about the hybrids, but they could just simply bring over the 4 by e system, which right now does 375 horsepower in the Wrangler. That'd still be more horsepower than the V6 version, and then they could step it up with the GMT6 engine, get around the 500-ish horsepower range, and I'll have more horsepower than the 392 version. So let me run through these Dodge SUVs before I close out the video. Now this right here is the Alfa Romeo Tonale that is gonna be rebadged and brought to America as the Dodge Hornet, and it appears to be a Charger knockoff, kind of like the Model Y is to the Model 3. And then looking at the second SUV, this is going to be the new Durango, and looking at it, it looks very similar to what the Grand Cherokee got redesigned to, so that's no surprise because it's made on the same line at the same plant. Dodge lineup by 2024 looks to be the Durango, the Hornet, the Charger, the Challenger, or Cuda, or however they handle that situation. And I want to keep my fingers crossed that they're going to have a Viper that's going to just magically pop up because they should have a two door car that takes on the Tesla Road and the C8 Corvette. And so looking at this slide that they show later in the live stream by all the vehicles coming on a set of large platform for 2024, looks like we got the new Dodge Charger, a new Chrysler 300, or some other crossover vehicles since Chrysler's going over to a people mover brand rather than luxury, I guess. The Ram Dakota, the Dodge Durango, the Dodge Hornet, the Jeep Commander, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and that looks to be the Jeep Compass on the very end. So you'll see that they're keeping this two-door version of this Challenger Akuta a secret. So I'm gonna end the video on that note with Dodge and next up, I'll break down a RAM because just like with Dodge, if you only watch certain parts of the promo, there's information that you might have missed. Help a brother out, subscribe to the channel, and until the next time, I'm out.